I'm going to ask for Councillor uh, Brian McCaddy to now come forward. He's the next speaker on the list. Welcome. And whenever you're ready, Brian, uh, go right ahead. Thanks uh, very much, uh, uh, Chair Simmons and all uh, trustees. Uh, it's uh, it's great to uh, to be here tonight. It's uh, I guess it's just uh, maybe the second time in just over a month uh, being here, and uh, it's probably the second time in my whole eight year uh, period at City Council. So it, uh, I'm starting to feel comfortable. I, uh, I appreciate uh, being here, and of course we've been uh, meeting on on some of the issues we talked about previously. So it's it's nice to do that. Uh, I, I wanted to begin by by acknowledging that uh, as, a, as a fellow elected official, uh, there can't be anything more difficult in, in your job than, than working with uh, art processes and uh, the, the possibilities of having to close schools uh, throughout uh, Hamilton. And to do so uh, following a, a ministry uh, process that you don't have a lot of control over, as I understand it, and of course uh, with, uh, with financial decisions that are uh, very much uh, controlled by the province as well, you don't have a lot of uh, tools at your disposal to, uh, to make uh, different decisions. So it's, it's a very difficult position to be in. And, and I think in uh, Ward 1 and Ward 2, uh, Trustee Bishop's area, uh, which I uh, share part of that with her, it, uh, there, uh, I know she's gone through some difficult uh, processes downtown in the, in the core area. Uh, and I think probably made some pretty darn good decisions, which you've, uh, which you've supported uh, here in, uh, in getting some new schools downtown. And, and I think that's been a uh, from what I understand, from what I hear on the street, a uh, fairly positive uh, uh, initiative uh, supported by, uh, by the vast majority of citizens uh, in that area. At least that's uh, what I understand from, from Count, former Councillor Bettina and, and now Councillor Farr. I'd like to suggest uh, West Hamilton, uh, the Dalewood Arc area, is, uh, is quite a bit different than the downtown area, that part of uh, Ward 1, Ward 2, and that, uh, that uh, because of that there's, there's I think a different decision to be made here, uh, and, and the Prince Philip School in particular needs to stay open. I'd like to uh, address a couple of uh, points uh, that I, and in doing so, I'm, I'm hoping to be helpful as, as the ward councillor. I, uh, I, I made reference to being here a, a month or so ago. I, I think, uh, I, think I, I feel strongly that uh, we need to continue to find ways to work together. Uh, more as, as, a, as a group of trustees and a group of councillors, uh, both playing in very, very important governance roles in our, in our city. And I think the, the citizens of Hamilton expect us to do so. Uh, also, we, we work in very different environments, uh, uh, different uh, uh, backgrounds, different histories. Uh, I, th I think that folks uh, want us to work together, and I, I, I think that we can do so. And I'm going to offer some thoughts tonight that hopefully are along those lines. Uh, the next issue, or the first issue I wanted to deal with, uh, was the issue of enrollment. And you've heard all the numbers, uh, but I, I think it's important to, to note that the, uh, I mean, I've just been blown away by the talent uh, involved in the art committee. Uh, the, uh, the, the parents, the, uh, the, the teachers and, and uh, principals who are involved in that. As I understand it, uh, uh, 13 meetings uh, they uh, undertook to uh, work through this process. And, as you can tell from uh, the comments already tonight and more to come, going through those numbers in incredible detail and uh, re-examining uh, the, the earlier numbers that were produced by staff and, and coming up with a, with a different conclusion uh, based on those 13 meetings, uh, uh, including uh, many, many more meetings, I, I'll, uh, I can tell you, outside of the formal ARC meetings to, uh, to, to do background work and to, uh, to inform others uh, in, the, in the schools. Uh, that they uh, represent and, and the, uh, the neighborhoods that they represent. So I think we need to, to pay very close attention to that, uh, that talent, uh, those ARC recommendations, and I'll come back to that later. I, I wanted to, uh, to begin on, on a positive uh, note in, in the enrollment section by, by thanking Trustee Bishop. I know she's worked very hard on Prince Philip School in particular. Uh, she, uh, of course, brought forward the Mandarin program uh, based on a, an Edmonton model. She, I was uh, I was informed uh, of that uh, in the early days when she was working on that, and, and, uh, and of course it came to pass. And that's a, a very exciting uh, initiative that Prince Philip uh, now has the, uh, the ability to host. 
And I think uh, we heard from some of the comments earlier that that program could well grow uh, as, as a, uh, in the school board and that would benefit the uh, Prince Philip enrollment. On my, on my side of the uh, equation, uh, from the neighborhood side, uh, it is a neighborhood, uh, Ainsley Wood, uh, that is challenged uh, clearly by student housing and the number of, uh, of uh, rental houses as compared to uh, what have been, would have been more of a traditional uh, family neighborhood uh, or the traditional family neighborhood. Uh, and, and that certainly changed the character of, of the, uh, the area. But uh, nonetheless, the ARC numbers still say that there, there, uh, there are adequate uh, numbers of enrollment and uh, the uh, school can remain uh, open at this point in time. On my side, I, I work with the uh, at McMaster University on some of these issues, as you, can, as you would suspect, the student housing issues, all the dynamics in those neighborhoods. And the President's Advisory Committee on Community Relations has in fact uh, taken an interest in this issue uh, led by President Dean. And I believe you uh, received a letter earlier on from President Dean indicating his, uh, his interest in the area and encouraging uh, everything you can do to, uh, to treat that uh, neighborhood in a positive way, uh, ideally keeping the school open. The, the Packer group has also uh, struck a task force as well to, uh, comprised of uh, McMaster folks, uh, myself, my office, other city staff, and uh, members of the Ainsleywood Westdale Community Association to look uh, at various ways that we could assist in uh, encouraging families back into the area, recruiting families, uh, to use the, that language, uh, back into the area. And uh, we, we've already uh, come up with some thoughts uh, on that. Uh, uh, the other thing, of course, the city uh, plays a role uh, there at Prince Philip uh, in Alexander Park, which is our, your next door neighbor, uh, the green space adjacent to, uh, to the school. And we feel that's a very important linkage, the, uh, the school and the park uh, benefiting both, uh, both sides of that occasion, uh, uh, corollary of that situation. And of course, all the parents and families uh, having that park there. I'd even suggest, and we've talked about it in the task force I just mentioned, uh, and perhaps a radical idea, we'll see what uh, the Ainsleywood uh, neighbors think of this, uh, but uh, do we need to look uh, perhaps at uh, the Rifle Range Road uh, frontage of the park? Uh, do we need to look at perhaps uh, building houses uh, along just the frontage, not the park, but just the very frontage as it is uh, on the opposite side of Rifle Range Road uh, in an effort to, uh, to have families uh, move into, that, into those houses to, uh, to, to better the enrollment numbers uh, uh, with, for Prince Philip over the, over the long run. That's just an idea at this point, but one that I, uh, idea amongst many that we can discuss uh, in the neighborhood along with the McMaster initiative. The, uh, the next area I want to talk about is funding for repairs because that's an area that you're in a very difficult to position uh, in uh, given the, uh, the ministry situation, the provincial situation and, and the need for repairs right across uh, Hamilton and all the different schools you have. Again, here I think an opportunity for the city and board to work together. Um, the PTR process was an unfortunate uh, situation uh, beginning in 2004 and uh, I was uh, at the time set up a West Hamilton Schools Committee to, uh, to try and respond or begin responding to the PTR process and, uh, and I guess recently we've, we've learned that in fact the schools weren't PTR and uh, we no longer use that term as I understand it. Uh, yet as we've heard there's been uh, little investment in those schools uh, at least in part because of that false PTR uh, analysis at the time. What can, what can the city do to assist? Uh, Dalewood uh, School, uh, one of the three schools involved uh, in the ARC process, uh, of course, as you know, we're uh, rebuilding the rec center uh, likely in uh, 2015 uh, is, is what we're targeting, a uh, $7-$8 million investment uh, for the rec center. And I'd like to suggest that we uh, should also invest uh, in uh, some of the things that you're concerned about at Dalewood School. Uh, an elevator to the second floor, uh, an accessible washroom, uh, and, and, and the gym. Uh, the city, I believe, uh, as one councillor, as the Ward 1 councillor, should, should look at funding those uh, three items, which, uh, which would assist the school as well. The second floor, uh, uh, getting to the second floor in the rec centre, which I can certainly justify uh, as city dollars uh, spent. Uh, once you're on the second floor, you're on the second floor of the school. I think that's something we can assist with. Repairs to Prince Philip, I was at a speech contest two weeks ago at Prince Philip, uh, Judith was there and 
former Mac president, uh, now a full-time uh, parent. Uh, Peter George was there as well, and uh, in talking to some of the staff at Prince Philip, uh, we found that uh, even $500,000 would go a long way to, uh, to helping the Prince Philip situation. And I'd like to, uh, to offer through the area rating dollars, you've heard about, uh, I think about five weeks ago when I was here, uh, I can use my area rating money, uh, Ward 1 money, to contribute $500,000 to the repairs of Prince Philip School. Lastly, I would say... Uh, <laughs> lastly, I, I would just touch briefly, and you've already heard it tonight, so I won't spend a lot of time, but as a, as a city councillor, neighbourhoods are critical, obviously, the hub of any neighborhood as a school, uh, is a school. We've lost two of the three schools. Uh, we are stressed by some of the student housing issues uh, that I've, I've talked about. Uh, and to lose a school, lose the walkability that we have in the Prince Philip area is critical to me as a city councilor. So a difficult decision uh, for you. Uh, I would suggest the ARC process, uh, their comments make it a lot easier for you than, than it might have been. Very, very clear recommendations with lots of talent. I'll finish by uh, saying I'd like to help with the city dollars uh, and uh, in a chat with uh, Minister Ted McMeekin uh, about two weeks ago, he suggested that uh, the best way to go on this is with the ARC recommendations, with the community recommendations. He's a, he's a good politician and uh, he, uh, he, he, it was his thoughts uh, on this, uh, so something to keep in mind uh, in, the, uh, in the days and weeks ahead as you make your decision. Thanks very much. Thank you, Brian. clarification. Uh, Trustee Hicks. Uh, through the chair, I'd like to take you up on that new Jim and Dale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other questions for clarification? Uh, Trustee Orban. Uh, question to the council. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. This uh, area reading funds do all the, I guess I'm making assumption here, all councillors have access to that Amount of monies for their areas. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other councillors are going to be upset at me for bringing this up. But, uh, it's it's wards one through eight, so uh, all wards one through eight. Uh, we're phasing in the uh, the dollars. It's part of the area rating decision. Phased in over four years, so we're going to have one point six million dollars per year uh, for for each of wards one through eight. Uh, so. Uh, and, we, and the councillor controls those funds along with, uh, of course, consultation in the neighbourhoods uh, and ultimately approval by council, but uh, councillors tend to respect each other's uh, uh, budgets, so I'm hopeful that uh, we'd be successful on that. Does that include things like transportation? That might be pushing it a bit, but <laughs> capital dollars. Is, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Trustee Turkstra. Thank you very much. Um, you were talking about an initiative where you're recruiting families into the area and you've been throwing some ideas around. Could you share a couple of those and are there any specific to Innovation Park? The, uh, the ideas uh, we've, been, we've been talking about so far at Mac uh, with McMaster is uh, to look at the, uh, the number of new hires that Mac has. Uh, they, they come in uh, all the time, uh, it's just like many of our organizations, uh, a lot of folks are retiring uh, with the demographics. And the idea is, is to uh, put together packages for the, uh, the new folks coming in to the different departments and to encourage them to live in uh, Ainsleywood, Westdale. Uh, and uh, to do so by explaining what an incredible community it is in terms of all the three, three schools and, uh, and the walkability aspects and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, we're looking at, uh, at the city level, is, is there a way we can provide uh, interest-free loans to uh, assist people in uh, renovating some of those houses, which which uh, need renovations in many cases, uh, some of those kinds of things. So that's, the, uh, that's one of the ideas. Nothing uh, in particular to, to do with the innovation park. Uh, when uh, the change happened with uh, CanVet in particular, coming from Ottawa, 100 PhDs or as many have made the trip, uh, uh, there were efforts in the city to, to tell them about the Ainsleywood neighborhood, uh, Ainsleywood Westdale neighborhood, as well as the Kirkendall neighborhood there as well. That's actually in Kirkendall uh, on the other side. Uh, so there's nothing specific on that, but it's certainly something we could talk about. Do you know, just for the, one more quick question, do you know if there's, uh, are there daycare plans for that complex? Uh, I don't know offhand, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, there's certainly uh, getting to be a critical mass over there now with the, uh, with the, the red brick building full and the CanMet uh, building now. 
and of course Mac just beginning on uh, the Automotive Research uh, Center across the street. I think they just received a grant, a large uh, federal grant yesterday on that. So, uh, so it, uh, I'm not aware. We'd have to talk to Zach Douglas and the folks in MIP, but um, you would think at some point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Seeing no more. Thank you very much, Councillor, for coming Appreciate tonight. That. Thank you with us.